Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It is Monday review time again, and for the third week in a row, it is a positive episode in store. Um, the third and final um, part of a trilogy of away games on Saturday saw us travel north to Highbury to face an informed Fleetwood side who were many were tipping to be an outside bet to okay, um, gate crash the playoffs. Um, but we come away with a valuable point, despite conceding a frustrating equaliser late on in injury time. wind assisted uh, leveller from their free kick, I believe. Um, but yeah, on reflection, it was probably a fair result. So despite the uh, annoyance of um, entering injury time leading... I don't think too many people could argue that Fleetwood probably deserve something out of the game. And I predicted one all in our match preview prior to the game on Thursday. Would have been happy with it. And um, yeah, still am with after a couple of days. Obviously, it's annoying um, at the time when you lead so late to, to drop points. And if we hadn't, we would have been sitting pretty in 13th in the table. Um, instead, we stay 18th. We are three points clear of the drop zone both Bristol Rovers and Oxford, who come to the Priestfield in the next few days. Uh, they won their games to close the gap, but I don't think that takes anything away from our performance. And this is what Steve Lovell had to say after the game, reflecting on it. He said, it was a good point at the end of the day because it was a horrible game and one where it was so easy to come away with nothing. He then goes on to say, the ball was going all over the place. We tried to play football and we were getting in their final third, but it was just going out of play all the time. I don't think I've been in many games where the wind has been as bad as that. Um, these types of games at any level are horrible. It's just a case of when you're playing in a howling wind and it's raining and windswept and tricky conditions. It's just a case of getting in, getting the job done any which way and then getting out. And We were... Very, very close to the perfect away performance. We soaked up pressure. We put bodies on the line. Looking at the stats for the match, we had 48% of the ball, which against a, a side away from home is decent enough, especially a Fleetwood side that, that boasts very good attacking players and a, a decent League One squad. Um, as I say, we defended resolutely. Uh, we made six blocks in total, which indicates that everyone was willing to do their job off the ball, uh, put their bodies on the line. Um, Thomas Holy's been good again um, and he's only been beaten by a slightly f uh, freakish free kick late on um, but yeah really close like I say to being the perfect away performance but sometimes you don't get what you deserve and sometimes you get slightly more than you deserve so we'll take the point and move on and as I said last week March is a massive month and um, we could be safe or pretty much safe by the end of the month if we continue to play in the same vein and continue to pick up points over the next five games. Um, in terms of Luke Cordell's last paragraph, he does um, sort of reiterate that. He says, not the win the jewels had come close to earning, but it's another point, another positive showing, and they keep moving forward. If they keep up their momentum against their relegation rivals, then they could be safe by April. Oxford Saturday, Bristol Rovers Tuesday. I think if we can take four points from then two games, then we're pretty much there. I think that would open up sufficient gap. I'm not even sure that 50 points will be the mark that teams need to reach to this to reach this season to stay safe. Looking at the the league predictor I did a week or so back, um, I'm still on course to have us finishing on 56 points. I did say that we'd draw with Wickham and beat Fleetwood on that, so. It's four points. We've got it the other way around, but that doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, as Luke says again in his report, the Jules return home to prepare for games against Oxford and Bristol Rovers. Both teams are below them in the relegation scrap. We know that for the last few seasons, our home form hasn't been up to scratch and we've not picked up enough victories and we've not picked up enough points. But I've said it once and I'll say it again, these new arrivals have made a massive difference. The like of Graham Burke and Leonardo da Silva Lopez obviously jumped to mind straight away because they're playing regularly. Um, the others haven't we haven't seen them so much in terms of Tarvon Campbell and Billy King um, and Ricky Holmes hopefully will be fit for Saturday if not next Tuesday that could, could be a massive boost um, top quality player at this level um, but obviously we need to get him fully fit but yeah it, and all in all a, a decent enough performance um, and a really good point 
Um, and another positive was that Tom Eaves was back in the goals. So after a run of only one in nine, stretching back to Wickham at home, middle of December, through to the Coventry game where he scored from the spot late on. Um, and there was talk and rumblings and with his form dropping off and him not working as hard because he didn't get a desired move to the championship or wherever it was that the bid supposedly came in for. But I, I've said it and I'll say it again, I don't think that was the case. I just think he was going through a bit of a, a rough trot in terms of form and in front of goal. But now all of a sudden he's got three in his last six. Um, yeah, and he's got two in his last three, so back to averaging a goal a game over the last half a dozen, up to 18 for the season in all competitions and no sign of him not working hard for me. Um, and if we keep him fit, I think we'd be absolutely fine. Um, Going to finish up on an in focus today and it is this man coming up on your screen who put uh, personal celebration aside um, to join up with the squad and play at Fleetwood on Saturday and that is this fella. Unbelievably um, selfless act from our current captain, Max Amar, um, who missed the birth of his second child on Friday to travel up with the squad to Fleetwood to make sure that he played because we would have been defensively very short if, if Max had taken the choice to not travel and stay at home and be at his um, other half side. And I don't think anyone would have begrudged him that. There's no greater gift than becoming a parent, I don't think. And... I spoke to Max a couple of years ago, right at the back end of the 2017, no, 2016-17 season, about a week after we'd stayed up at Northampton. and um, He's a top bloke, really amiable, really easy to talk to, um, really proud of, of his football career um, and how he's come over from Germany to be a success at, in this country. And But... His eyes lit up even more when we got onto the subject of family life and he was talking about his young son at the time and um, about sleepless nights and changing nappies and how good his other half was in terms of letting him sleep after training and preparing for games correctly. Um, so I know how much that type of thing means to Max. My father, myself, and I'm sure plenty of you are, and um, to miss the birth of your own daughter is, like I say, an incredibly selfless act and he was very, very close to almost having the perfect weekend, so to speak. New child, little baby arrives. Captain in the side of three points would have been absolutely spot on, but it wasn't quite to be. Um, but he's obviously got bigger celebrations than a than a point on the road up north than uh, to, to, to take care of. And if you are watching, Max, um, we hope mummy's doing well and we hope baby's doing well and big brother's doing well and, and you're doing well and you're getting some sleep because we've still got some important games coming up. Um, but yeah, in terms of Max, the professional, he's now only one game away from 200 club appearances, which is absolutely astonishing considering he's still only 27, I believe. Um, for me, he's been spot on ever since he first arrived on loan back in November 2014 under Peter Taylor. Um, yeah, he's had spells where he's not been quite at it and not been as good, but I think to have played that many games for one club at that age tells you everything you need to know about him as a player and him as a person and him as a professional footballer. 2014-15, um, he played 29 and scored one while on loan. And then we took advantage of his contract situation and signed him on a permanent three-year deal that summer, 2015. 15-16 was slightly tricky, but he still played a part. 33 games and a solitary goal that season as we finished ninth and threatened for a long time to get promoted, not just through the playoffs, but automatically before the wheel sadly fell off. And he had a tricky season in terms of missing games because of the form of John Egan and Deji Osolaja. But whenever he was called upon, he was spot on again. And following that up from his first campaign with us where Justin came in and we finished 12th. So he played a big part in that early success when he first arrived. 2016-17 um, was a lot trickier, but he played a lot more games, 52. And he was 21 of them were as captain um, when he took over from Josh Wright upon Adrian Pennock's appointment as manager. And he scored seven goals that season. Only one of them goals ended up in defeat. Um, so he, he earned a 16 points from 21 available when he netted. Um, and seven's a top effort for a centre-half. I mean, you look at the likes of Aidan Flint, who scored double figures for 
Bristol City, I think, two years in a row before going to Borough. So seven goals from centre-back is a very good return. And them goals played a massive part in helping us ultimately stay up that season um, because it did go to the final day and it did go to having to sit around at Northampton waiting for another game to finish. And then 2017-18, obviously Gabriel Zaquani came to the club and took over the captain's armband. But Max played another 50 games that season and scored three goals. And he's spoken highly of his central defensive partner, Gabriel, plenty of times and says that Gabby has taught him how to be a better defender, to be a defender first and foremost before thinking about getting the ball and trying to play. Um, and I, I totally agree. I think Max Amar has got better and better again. And in a side that, that has struggled defensively this season, I think he's been pretty consistent. Again, he's played 35 times and scored twice. Captained us in the last four um, since Gabriel's acquired his injury. And the form's been good in that time. So, again, it comes back to everyone who said we was pretty much gone in terms of relegation when Zaquani was injured. I think that's credit to Max Aymar, who I think adapts better now to playing with different partners. I think earlier in his career, he was very good alongside John Egan. But if John wasn't there, he struggled a little bit with us. I think... Um, 16, 17, when he was captain for them 20-odd games and we kept chopping and changing the system and his partners and I think he played in a back two and a, a, sorry, a back four or a back three and he played with Christ knows how many players, Zesh Raymond, Emmanuel Osa Davey, uh, I think Deji Osage was still in, Zesh Raymond coming, Chris Erd played at times. He can't be good for anyone, there's no continuity or consistency and you can't get used to playing with someone. But I think now with more experience, he's adapted his game and he knows how to, to do different things when he's playing with different centre-back partners, whether that's Gabby or Alex Lacey or now Connor Ogilvy. And we've been spot on defensively since that Kwani's injury and Max has played a big part of that, as is Connor Ogilvy. Luke O'Neill at right back upon his recall looks to be getting somewhere near his best again, the Luke O'Neill that we enjoyed last season. Barry Fuller just keeps doing Barry Fuller things. He's been immaculate at right back and at left back this season. Phenomenal. Um, so yeah, uh, a big credit to Max Aimer, I think, has played a big part at this club since he arrived um, nearly four summers ago now, um, averaging 40 games per season, which is excellent. So it tells you all you need to know about him in terms of his fitness and his injury record as well. And it'd be great if we can continue playing well and climbing away from danger. Um, and if he does feature on Saturday at Oma Oxford, he'll massively deserve any round of applause that he gets from the faithful because 200 appearances for one club is a is an excellent achievement, especially in the modern game. You don't see it too much now. Um, and fingers crossed he can go and make, on an up, make another 200 after that and become one of the all-time leading appearance makers at the club because I think he deserves it and I think he's got better and better over time. Um, anyway, that's enough from me today. Um, another positive one, like I promised. Um, we'll be back Thursday, myself and Boz, to preview Oxford at home and maybe Bristol Rovers at home. And then from Saturday through to the following weekend, we've got three match day lives on the bounce with uh, Oxford, Bristol Rovers, and an away day at Luton. So looking forward to all of them. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Keep doing all you do. And until next time, up the jewels.